Dating on the internet has never been black or white. You either find a happy ever after with a partner of your dreams, or you experience something truly horrifying and become the topic of a true crime documentary. Unfortunately, yet again, online dating has shown its ugly side, and more people have fallen prey to the many predators that stalk the internet. After a lengthy investigation into this particular predator, Netflix released a documentary about a man known as the Tinder Swindler. So what part of this harrowing tale won't you be seeing on the big screen? Let's find out the six things Netflix didn't tell you about the Tinder Swindler. For those not in the know, what even is a Tinder Swindler? What's the story behind the fake billionaire Simon Levayev? The Netflix documentary answers that question. The Tinder Swindler is a true crime documentary that tells the story of the Israeli conman Shimon Hayut, who used the dating application Tinder to find women, manipulate them emotionally, and deceive them into financially supporting his fictitious, lavish lifestyle. The story revolves around an Israeli man, born Shimon Hayut, who presented himself as the son of Russian-Israeli diamond mogul Lev Levayev under the name Simon Levayev. He crafted the perfect fake lifestyle on the dating app Tinder and would contact and trick women into lending him exorbitant amounts of money he would never repay nor had any intention of repaying. After contacting these women through Tinder, Simon would charm them with lavish gifts and take them to dinners on private jets. Not with some massive inherited wealth, it was all an elaborate scam using the money he had conned off other women. Part of his scam would involve him pretending that his life was in danger, that he was being targeted by his enemies, and that he was in need of their help. Simon would send the same messages and images to the different women he was scamming, depicting fictitious images of him being recently attacked with a knife only being saved by his bodyguard. Obviously, this was all staged. The point of his messages was to emotionally manipulate his victims, using their pity and care as a hook to ask them for financial assistance, pretending to not be able to use his credit cards and bank accounts due to his apparent precarious situation. The women would often take out bank loans and new credit cards in order to help. Unfortunately for them, their money would be gone for good. Simon was no billionaire's son and wouldn't be paying them back. And if he ever did, it was usually pure pretense, giving them worthless jewelry or forging documents to show fake bank transfers. He would then break off contact with these women, ghosting them and using his ill-gotten wealth to lure new victims. So, what part of the Tinder Swindler's story was missing? First, Lev Levayev filed a complaint against Simon. Israeli businessman and CEO of LLD Diamonds, Lev Levayev, filed a complaint against Simon, who had been going around swindling women while pretending to be his son. Lev Levayev is popularly known as the King of Diamonds, and as you can imagine, he wouldn't be very keen on the idea of someone tarnishing his family's name and company's reputation. Lev filed a complaint against the fraudster with the Israeli police, coming out and making it very clear that Shimon Hayut had no relation to the Levayev family. LLD Diamonds even released an official statement following the documentary stating, LLD Diamonds has been a well-regarded leader in the diamond industry for three decades. Our company has no connection whatsoever with Shimon Hayut. He is a fraud who has tried to exploit our good name to con victims out of millions of dollars. Our sympathies go out to his victims. His fraud has also caused ongoing confusion about our company. Nothing he has said about LLD or anything else should be believed. As soon as we learned of the fraud, we filed a complaint with the Israeli police, and we hope that Mr. Hayut faces the justice he deserves. Forced to run away from his birth country for his many crimes, it was only a matter of time until Simon's scams would finally get the better of him and he would fall into the arms of the law. Second, Simon has been a known fraudster for a long time. Shimon Hayut has been a known fraudster in Israel since 2011. Before his arrest in 2019, he would flee Israel despite being charged for multiple crimes, running away to Europe and committing several more crimes. He was wanted in Israel, England, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, and Norway. Simon started his fraudulent behavior when he was 20 years old. He started off stealing checks from the families he worked for. Simon had worked for a wealthy family as a handyman and worked for another family as a babysitter for their four-year-old son. It's reported that he used his stolen money for flying lessons and to buy himself a fancy Porsche. Simon's fraudulent deceptions weren't just to trick women into giving him money though. Back in 2021, he presented as a real estate expert, even giving an interview on how to create a successful career in this field. And of course, in the interview, he lied as well saying he was a 29-year-old millionaire when, in reality, he was actually 31 and far from being that wealthy. 
He would also present himself as a pilot. Even though he had spent some money on flying lessons, he never completed the flight course. But Simon isn't the kind of person to let reality get in the way of whatever identity he chooses to fabricate. The women depicted in the Netflix documentary weren't the first or only people to erroneously give money to Simon. A former classmate of his revealed that Simon made him invest in his clothing business idea, which to nobody's surprise, never actually saw the light of day. Third, what justice came to Simon and his crew? In December 2019, Shimon Hayut was sentenced to 15 months in prison after being convicted of fraud, theft, and forgery. His imprisonment was eventually reduced to five months, understandably upsetting the victims of his many scams. The reported reasons behind his early release were his good behavior and the need to reduce the prison population to avoid an outbreak of COVID-19. After his release, Simon would return to Tinder, only being finally banned from the dating app after the release of the Netflix documentary. A ban which, unlike a conviction for multiple counts of theft, fraud, and forgery, is for life. Simon's imprisonment wasn't the only lenient part of his crime spree. Some of the other people involved in Simon's scams ended up not getting off scot-free, like Simon's father, Yohanan Hayut, who was a chief rabbi of El Al Airlines. He was also involved in his son's scams and helped him to swindle money from people, claims which he denies, of course. There was also Simon's apparent business partner, Avishay, who reportedly had an active role in his schemes as well. One victim claimed that Avishay would call and text her urging to send Simon money, on top of the fact that Avishay had known of Simon's true identity the entire time he did this, one of Simon's closest allies was his bodyguard, Peter, who, despite being directly involved in the scam, still walks the streets as a free man. He even decided to sue Netflix for his depiction in the documentary. He is still seen with Simon, keeping his role as his bodyguard. Fourth, Cecily Fjolhoi's full story. After falling victim to Simon Leviev's deception, these unfortunate women were left financially devastated and stuck paying off their debts even after the release of the Netflix documentary. One of these victims is Cecily Fjallhoi. After her encounter with Simon, she was left with 200,000 pounds of debt and in constant fear of debt collectors chasing after her. Her story was a pretty tragic one. For months, she believed Simon and her were in a relationship and she was in daily contact with Simon. She knew him as the incredibly wealthy Simon Levayev, and Simon played the role very well. During their first meeting, Cecily didn't just meet Simon, she met his whole entourage, Simon's bodyguard, his business partner, and his secretary. She began to fall for him, flirting online with him daily and meeting him several more times as their one-sided relationship grew. About 13 weeks after their first date, Simon would shift his scam into the next gear. Cecily would get a very distressing message from Simon telling her that the threats on his life had become very serious, and he desperately needed her help. She would loan him several thousand pounds and never got anything in return but fake documents showing Simon had apparently repaid her. By the time Cecily had realized that her money was gone for good and the affection was not mutual, she would report Simon in both Norway and England. She would come to find out that Simon was convicted of major fraud against three Finnish women in 2015 women who had suffered a similar fate to her. Despite her dire situation, having taken out a loan from 10 banks to help Simon, she hasn't lost hope. Cecily would become close friends with another victim of Simon's, Penilla Schoholm, and even share pictures of them vacationing together in 2021. Cecily would come out and make a statement saying, the best thing a person that has found themselves in a similar position can do is to share their experience. Do not be afraid to talk about it and report such incidents. No one will benefit from the situation if the person keeps everything to themselves and lives with the inner blame. Fifth, Simon's victims go fund me. All three victims have been left financially devastated by Shimon Hayut. Cecily, with her 200,000 pounds of debt, Pernilla Schoholm, who thanks to Simon, still lives with her mom. Her wish to buy herself an apartment was crushed when she lent her money to him. She's been left bankrupt and getting an apartment is not exactly high priority as she struggles to get back on her feet. And the third victim, Aileen Charlotte, who actually managed to swindle the swindler. Together, all three victims started a fundraiser on GoFundMe after the release of the documentary. It turns out quite a lot of people were interested in helping them. So they started a fundraiser with a 600,000 pound goal. And so far, it's raised 161,000 pounds. Sixth, Simon's statement. After Simon's many scams had been brought to light, he would vanish off social media for a while and had kept quite the low profile ever since. That is, until he recently came out and gave an interview, seemingly to share his side of the story. In the interview, he would claim that he never did anything wrong. This wouldn't be the first time he would claim no wrong. When asked in the past about his fraudulent adoption of a fake name and pretending to be a billionaire's son, he said that he had the right to call himself whatever he wants. 
When asked how he funded his lavish lifestyle, Simon claimed to be a legitimate businessman and that he purchased Bitcoin back in 2011, and the rise in the cryptocurrency was enough to fund his lifestyle. Despite having spent two years in prison in Finland for defrauding three women and an entire documentary about conning multiple women out of massive sums of money, Simon is somehow still in a relationship with his Israeli model girlfriend, Kate Conlon. Authorities suspect that Simon may have stolen as much as $10 million from victims around the world, but he continues to deny any wrongdoing. In his own words, I was just a single guy that wanted to meet some girls on Tinder. What do you think about the Tinder swindler? Did he really do no wrong? And should he be walking around a free man? If you enjoyed this video, you should click a video on the screen. It's just as good. See you there.